Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road. It is raining and uh, we're headed out to do a off-road test ride on my brother's Honda CB500X. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing. 15% chance of rain. I know better than to roll the dice in the Willamette Valley but here I am in Brownsville, it is pouring rain, or at least raining reasonably hard. Uh, so we're getting a really good test in of not only the 500X, but also the Sedici gear that I bought. And uh, this company, Aurora, sent me these heated gloves. I thought I'd give them a shot today because this bike doesn't have heated grips, but I haven't even had to turn them on yet. So hopefully they're waterproof because uh, we're getting rained on. But I got to get some gas and then we're going to head up into the woods, do some gravel, some mud probably, and maybe even a, an ATV trail or two. Because people always ask me if this is a good adventure bike, and uh, I want to try some stuff that, you know, a newer adventure bike rider might be interested in or capable of doing. On the 500X, this bike is completely bone stock. The only thing he's added is this Ram Ball mount, and I put this giant loop tank bag on here. That's it. Stock tires, stock everything. No hand guards. So we're going to take it easy. No fairing protection, no engine protection. And this is a fun bike to ride. It's an easy bike to ride. It demands very little of you if you're an experienced rider. So you can just focus on riding and not worry about other stuff. All right, gas time. How far you gotta go today? I'm going up in the woods over here just to mess around. This is 15% chance of rain when I left, so. Well, once I get my gear on, I'm going. It takes too damn long to take it back off. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Man, this thing's easy to get on and off of. I remember I sat on one of these and I was looking at my first bike and I thought it was so tall. And now it doesn't feel tall at all. Like if I can swing my leg over without having to think about it, it's not a tall bike because I'm not a tall person. There's gonna be some mud up there today. Take her easy. Well, predictably, predictably, no. Predict, no, that's right, predictably. Predictably, I can't words today. My visor is already fogged. Uh, I could switch the goggles. I may need to do that. So there's some gravel here that we could hit up, but I really do want to go up to the top where the views are better. I'm sorry you end up with the same views in every video, but it's just the nicest place to ride that's close. And you know, the point is not to see new places. The point is to test the bike. And when you're riding a bike that you're not super familiar with, it is smart to go to places that you are familiar with. So it removes one sort of uh, unknown from the equation, you know? So you can focus on the bike and not on not getting lost. Let's go down here. Let's get a little off-road in so I can go down and put my goggles on. Okay, one thing I will tell you right away about the 500X is it sucks to stand up on. I am bent so far over right now, and the pegs are awful. So um, if you get one of these for off-road riding, you're gonna need new pegs. And my suggestion would be bar risers. Man, this grew in a lot this summer. Yeah, because this is, this is borderline unstandable. Like, I can bend my knees, great, awesome, but uh, it's a lot of bending my knees and bending over, arching my back, as it were. Hey, the traction's not as terrible as I thought it would be. There we go. All right. So this may be a sit-down ADV bike at first. Uh, it may be a sit-down ADV ride for me today, because unless it gets hairy. So the back is definitely sliding. These are probably... And I'm being generous here, 2080 off-road, on-road tires. I only say that because they have some sideways uh, grooves in them. So they're designed to not only give you forward traction, but also side to side. But they're not great. The point is not to determine if this is the most hardcore off-road motorcycle in the world. The point is to determine if you're a new rider, this is kind of my perspective, or a newish rider who was interested in adventure riding, who was interested in going moto camping, um, is this a bike you can feel comfortable that it will reliably get you to the places you need to go and maybe get you through some of the places that you didn't know you needed to go? Can it handle a maintained logging road fast and can it handle a less maintained logging road maybe a little slower? Because that's probably the worst that a newish rider is going to want to tackle anyway. I know the answer. <laughs> We're out here to prove it. We're not out here to determine it. I know the answer. I've seen enough videos of people taking these things on ATV trails and stuff to know that it'll do just fine. But the other thing you have to consider is that those are often skilled riders. So, um, you know, and I'm not a total noob anymore, but I'm sure as hell not Jeremy McGrath. So uh, we're going to get out and see what an average rider can do on a bike like this. So that maybe a newer rider can see what they might feel comfortable doing and feel confident knowing that the bike will get them through whatever shenanigans 
that they're willing and we, they're willing to do and comfortable with attempting. Okay, we're coming up to the gravel, so we gotta go up to the first viewpoint, obviously. That's required by law every time I do a ride up here. And it is a really fun kind of warm up on a hill and it'll be a good test of the suspension of this thing because I'm gonna try to do it without standing. Doesn't look like there's anyone up there. So we're going up on that hill. You can see it right here where the snow is. That's where we're going. All right, going up. I may end up in third. So camera won't do it justice, but we're going up several hundred feet right now. All right, I've got it in third, still sitting, uh, rough, rocky, definitely some bouncing, good times, but she's doing great. I'm kind of shocked by how well these tires do, to be honest. I'm not going to get super confident, overconfident. You know, I'm definitely getting bounced, but it's not bottoming. The suspension is better than I expected. I really thought, because I'm a heavy guy, you know, I'm pushing 300 pounds these days, and here I am on what is essentially a tall street bike. You know, doing 32 miles an hour up a very rocky, uh, uneven, not at all flat hillside on a gravel road. And here we are. Well, look at that. Here we are. Huh. So that is the hill we just came up. All the way from, you can see there's a tiny little uh, flat open area. That's where we just came up from. But So we're in the clouds now. I'm starting to think that with a few mods, some protection, better tires would be the first thing I would do. Tires, hand guards, crash bars, skid plate. I would not be afraid to take this bike some places. And you know, that Honda reliability is a big plus. It's not hard riding. Like this is not hard riding, but is it, this is the pinnacle of what a new rider is probably gonna wanna do. Like literally the pinnacle, cause we're up here on top of the hill. So same test in reverse. Oh, God, standing is, um, it's basically a power squat on this thing. Like you can't see me, but my ass is so far over the back end of the bike right now. It's not at all comfortable. Sitting is actually better. Okay, there's a big bump. Yeah, well, here we are. I am, I am surprised. I haven't messed with the suspension at all. It's still the stock setup, but it's got screws. Is it adjustable? It's probably just preload, but still it's not nothing. Uh, I think a heavier rear spring would do a ton of good on this bike, honestly. It would increase your speed off-road significantly. Fourth gear? Sure. Fourth gear, gravel road. On the CB500X. I just made a video about whether or not this is off-road, and I can tell you it is a different experience going 30 miles an hour on gravel than it is on pavement, so don't try to tell me that this doesn't count. Okay. Dude, with some, with some decent tires, I could see ripping this thing. There's a reason why Ride Adventures uses these for their, uh, their training courses and for their tours, because it's a really unintimidating motorcycle that'll still get you a lot of places. And that's a good thing. Let's ride through some puddles. Okay, oh, yeah. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I really thought the suspension was gonna be a lot worse. Let's try a couple more. Huh. Yeah, I I like this more than I thought I would. You know, I said that, that the the X the versus X three hundred was like my new favorite beginner adventure bike. I, ugh, I don't think it is anymore. I I strongly suspect it's going to be this bike by the end of the day. This is typical what a lot of riders who are going to be in the market for a five hundred X will do. You know, this kind of wide gravel road stuff, and then they're going to get into the some of the more difficult side stuff like we did up to the top of that hill a minute ago. Man, she's more than capable, even in stock form, which is what is shocking me. I thought for sure I was going to spend the whole day complaining about wanting new tires, but at least on this gravelly stuff, until we get into some mud or sand, mud's going to be interesting because there's there's no depth to the to the tread on these tires because, like I said, they're street tires. They're made for rain, not for mud. On the CB500X, stock tires, stock everything on an ATV trail. It's a green ATV trail. Sorry, deal with it. We're not out here to break my brother's bike. We're out here to see if it'll do it. And I know it will. We're out here to prove it can do it is what we're doing. All right, so let's see how slippery it is. Unfortunately, there's some gravel on these, which is nice. I would say this represents, um, gotta get it a second. Some of the hardest stuff that most people who are in the market for a 500X will do. Sorry, I'm just still not confident in these tires. So I'm really not pushing it. This is a survival thing, not a, not an enjoyment thing, you know what I'm saying? 
I'm out of mud, man. I'm just waiting for the ass end of this to slide all the way out. Ooh, yeah. It's actually not doing bad. Decent track. Okay, nope, nope, nope. That's. <laughs> That was what I was afraid of. I was like, oh, I can screw around. No, you can't. Ass in, sideways, bad. It's all right, though. We saved her. Let's get some puddle action in. Man, I don't know how deep these are. Pretty deep. It's been raining up here, you know. The goal is not to crash. That is my goal for today. Man, it's muddy. It's definitely muddy. I am definitely gonna have to wash this before I give it back to him. But we found some mud. What are you gonna do? The rut on the right is it's a real grabber. Yeah, you can see it. Oop, tree branch. Great success. Mud. Holy sh that was slippery. All right, successfully navigated an OHV trail on the 500X. So there you go. No one died. Stock tires, so we're gonna go back up it because, well, I make bad calls. Okay, let's go uphill and see what happens. A little bit of a hill climb to the out. And we're free. The other concern with this thing is, is clearance, which is why you don't want to take it on anything crazy hard. But All right, we made it. Woo! Anyway, that was an ATV trail on the 500X. So, so we're going to ride to a mountaintop right now. Uh, there's two mountains out here. One is Bald Mountain and one is Round Mountain. And I don't remember which is which because the names are so distinct and different. But we're riding in a cloud right now to the top of the mountain on the 500X. So the question, can you ride to the top of a mountain on a Honda CB500X? The answer, I'm hoping, is going to be yes. Barring some unforeseen tragedy, I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch. You know, this is ruddy. There's runoff here. It's kind of kind of bouncy, kind of uneven, and the suspension is a lot better than I was expecting. I went out today because it's supposed to be warmer. The rest of the week, that's hail. That is definitely hail. Uh, the rest of the week is going to be really cold, like below freezing. And so today was supposed to be cloudy and like 40 instead of 30 with a small chance of rain. Yeah, I guess I should buy a lottery ticket today, huh? Well, it's, you know, it did say rain. This is hail, so technically there's, it's not raining. Okay, so the mountaintop is over here. Um, this is going to be super anticlimactic, but let's do it so we can say we did. Oh my God, snow. Hell yes. Wow, that is quite a difference from the bottom of this hill, huh? What an adventure. So can the 500X go in the snow? I mean... This much snow, I haven't died yet. Give it time, I'll find a way. Remember I said these tires suck in the mud? Well, uh, I bet they really suck in the snow. Having almost crashed in much better tires in the snow before, I'm gonna go with probably. Safety first, we're gonna do our safety waddle. So this is the top of the mountain right here. Uh, there's actually an amazing view of the valley. You guys have seen it before when I rode up here with Nathan. Um, I've been up here a couple times, but right now it's an amazing view of the cloud we're inside of, so enjoy that. Okay, back through the snow, back down the hill. So we've done a mountaintop, we've done an ATV trail, we've done snow. It's been a very good test of the 500X, frankly in conditions that most people that buy a 500X probably will never ride it in. But if you had to, you could, even on stock tires, because here we are, so far, surviving. Yeah. Oh, those of you that have 500Xs, I know you're out there, because I always watch the videos, even when I already have the bike, I like to see what other people say about it, to see what I think lines up. What do you think about it? What have you taken it in? Let us know in the comments. Pass on some words of wisdom, advice, and your judgment to the people who might be shopping for one in the comments. Man, I, the most impressive thing today and if, and if I had to like pick, if I had to like do odds on what would be the most impressive thing today, uh, I would have ranked these crappy tires above the suspension as a possibility. But I am actually pleased with the suspension. I, it can't be good. It's got to be their low end stuff. I'd be surprised if it's even off-road suspension, but man, I, it's just eating this up. 
I'm not doing the craziest, most technical stuff ever, but look at, it's all this big rock that you see here, and then just a bunch of ruts and indentations. You know, these, these roads aren't level. So I'm just impressed that it's eating it up. It's not bouncing me off the seat. I mean, I'm definitely bouncing. So it's not, it's not just like absorbing everything and I'm not noticing it. It's just, but it's like a fun amount of feeling it, honestly. You really feel like you're riding, you know? I'm impressed with that. I wasn't expecting that. I thought for sure I'd have to slow down because I'd be worried about breaking my brother's bike, <coughs> especially because I am well over the recommended weight. So like I'm as heavy as most riders in their gear, to be honest, at least an average rider in their gear. So that makes me feel supremely confident about recommending this both as a bike that you can do some light off-roading, but also to just throw all your gear on and go camping or whatever. In fact, both at the same time. So my final thoughts, my conclusions, it's snowing again. It's definitely snowing. We are riding in the snow right now. That's fun. And it is fun. I don't get to do that very often. I actually really like riding in the snow. There was no snow in the forecast, so it is a unique experience for a motorcycle rider to get to ride in the snow. Look at it come down. That's fun. What have I come up with today? What is my final judgment, my thoughts, my initial review, my initial off-road review of the CB500X? One, it confirmed everything that I thought I would think about it. Reasonably capable at light off-roading to moderate if it had to, right? Um, despite, you know, lack of ground clearance, uh, lower end suspension. Uh, it's super manageable power. I love how manageable it is. It's actually really easy and fun to ride. Power delivery is fun and smooth, but not scary or intimidating. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I came into this review, this ride, this test today with a certain expectation. And I think my expectation was met, but then it was exceeded. There are things about this bike that are a lot better than I expected, and that suspension is chief among them. Um, the traction on these stock tires is a little better than I expected, but you saw what happened the second I hit loose mud, and even the, the wet stuff, the snow stuff. So they're not great. But with new tires and a little crash protection, I would take this bike a lot of places. I don't know how much you're compromising. You're compromising speed, but you're not compromising capability. Like a Tenere will take you more places and it'll take you the same places. This will go faster, but this thing will go, I don't know, 60, 70% of the places that I would take a Tenere. So if you're a new rider, particularly one with almost no off-road experience, and you want to know if it's going to be able to handle some light off-road because you want to go right up to campsites or trailheads, or you just want to be prepared for what the road throws at you regardless. I would feel confident recommending this bike to you. I really would. And you can't beat the price. You could buy a new one, put new tires on it, get some luggage and be ready to go. It's still way less than a bigger, more expensive bike. You know, you, you get this, you learn on it, you build a lot of confidence, you grow into it. And then when you start to feel like it's not enough for you, then you sell it for what you paid and get a bigger bike. But I think, Learning to ride off-road is a total, it's a process. And this idea that you should buy a bike that you, could, you should grow into, I think is dumb. You should buy a bike that's like, if you're like a seven, it's like an eight in terms of capability, sure. But should you, if you're a five, buy a 10? No, you're gonna hurt yourself because it's too much bike for you. You're never gonna be comfortable or confident on that bike. You're never gonna be able to ride it to its capability. It's complete and total waste. You're much better off getting a bike that suits your ability level for a while until you're just like, I'm bored now. That's what happened with my 250L. I would say the DRZ, I hadn't gotten bored yet, but I could I could smell it. So I wanted to try something else, uh, which is why I moved on from it. But uh, I was not ready for that DRZ at first. And I wasn't ready for the 450L before I rode the DRZ. So I guess my point is, this is a really good starter adventure style bike. I hesitate to call it an adventure bike because I don't want people to think, oh, well, cool. I can just buy a 500X and take it on a BDR. You can't, like, you gotta do some stuff to it. I don't love the cast wheels. You know, there's things that aren't really adventure about it. The, the standing position is non-existent is a big one. But this bike will do a lot. And I'm impressed with what it's done off-road. Uh, other than in that sketchy mud, I'm totally confident on this. Totally confident to rip it around these gravel roads and even take it through a little bit sketchier stuff here and there. Seriously. So I think if you're a new rider looking for a pretty capable bike that's going to take you everywhere that you're willing to go as a new rider, I don't think you can go wrong with this. And you're getting Honda reliability and resale value and availability because you can find these all over the place. I think there'll be a longer review video on this bike eventually. I want to you know, put some more miles on it. We're getting close to that first oil change and uh, I'll do that and ride it a little bit more. But very positive, just like all Hondas. And you know, I'm, I'm a little bit of a Honda fanboy, so take that with a grain of salt. But, but that's how I feel about this bike after riding it off-road for a few hours up here in the mud, snow, gravel, rain, snow, everything. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. 
you have comments, if you have a 500X, you know, what kind of stuff have you done on it? How do you feel about it? Would you recommend it to a new ADV rider? Let me know in the comments. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I oh, thank you. Excellent! All right, baby. Can we get home before my heated gloves stop working? Because battery. Let's find out. Film at 11. Thank you.